Yeah. Well, I think it was a, it was a goal, yeah. right, to to help replenish, uh, you know, our farm system with, uh, you know, what our scouts and our front office feel are are good arms, right? Uh, the old adage, you can't have enough arms. Uh, so we went out and got as many as we could. So hopefully uh, a couple of these guys will work their way through our system and eventually uh, pitch in Coors Field to help the Rockies win. I know you have your hands full up here, but is there anyone that, that stood out to you that you guys received? You know, I, you know I've, I've read the bios and I've, I've, I've done some homework. You know, there's some, you know, all these guys, all these guys have a chance. That's what I like, right? Because you never know, uh, you know, when you're going to uncover a gem, right? So, you know, we're hoping that they all make it, right? That, that, that tells you that they're developing and, and pitching well and performing enough to work their way through our system and get to the major leagues. But, uh, they all got quality arms. Uh, they all have a resume. Uh, they all have a, a track record. Uh, they're professional pitchers. Uh, so that tells you there's some level of talent in there to, to be signed and drafted by organizations and be given a chance professionally. So, you know, we'll see about these guys, right? To, to the one, you know, one, your one specific question about one, the, you know, the one kid who's in Double A who's got the big arm, uh, Vodnik from Atlanta. Uh, he's interesting because of the velocity, right? But you know, there's more to there's more to pitching than just velocity, as we all know. But uh, in a, in a in a very quick look, Chris Norfia, who I think a lot of as our Double A manager, uh, was impressed by Victor. So, so we'll see how the rest of the guys uh, look as they as they put on a, a rocky uniform. Hey, but, buddy, the second part of this, not just acquiring pitching depth in sure. the future, but it frees up some of the young guys to get some more playing time. I'm talking sure. particularly Montero and Tolia right. at first base. I imagine. Yeah, more. Hey, listen. Tolia played right That's field. Right, right yeah. Last night. Yes, he did. Yeah. You were here. No, I wasn't. <laughs> but were you asleep by nine? Actually, I was because I was under the weather. Uh, man down? Man down. Okay. So anyway, the idea of it gives them a solid two months to get even more playing. Yeah. Game, that must be yeah. exciting for Well, them. yeah, I think that's a, that's a good thing, right? They'll, they'll, they, they should be here for a couple months, right? Based on performance, we hope that they do enough to, to stay here. Uh, but again, I mean, we'll have Charlie coming back at some point. Bryant will be coming back at, at some point. But in the near term, uh, you're correct. Those guys will be playing. And it, it is exciting, right, to, you know, to, to see what these guys can do. Because they'll, uh, as you know, they'll be the first to tell you, give me a chance. Give me an opportunity. I think I should be in the big leagues. I think I'm a big league player. So now let's, let's, let's hope they do it. Hey buddy, what can you tell me about Justin Burreal from the uh, Dodgers that you picked up? Yeah. Will he be active here? What's the plan? Oh, he's he's going to Albuquerque. Okay. Uh, you know, he hasn't pitched in about uh, eight or nine days, but he'll go to Albuquerque and get his feet on the ground. But we've seen him, right? He's pitched against us in in, in, in big league games. Uh, fastball around in the low 90s with a, with a nice breaking ball, uh, left-handed. Uh, you know, I, you know, strike thrower. Left-handed, uh, you know, big league experience. Left-handed, uh, you know, uh, can't, uh, you know, yeah, he try to stockpile pitchers, and you know, he's left-handed. <laughs> but you had mentioned Charlie Blackman. The Isotopes had announced he was going on a rehab assignment, and they God, what a bummer! <laughs> yeah. Can you just what what yeah. happened there? It, uh, Chuck had just a little bit of a minor setback, and I think uh, Chuck and Keith felt as though it wasn't. The right time to, to go. So we'll you know we'll continue to, to treat Chuck and he'll you know continue to strengthen the wrist and and, and, and hopefully in uh, you know a few days that that rehab will happen. So he's still able to do that. Well, he's still I know you aren't taking me pee today, but swing in the cage or yeah, he I think he's, to... yeah, he's going to continue to do some things. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he won't stop. But do you have a timetable on Chris Bryant? No. No. Getting better. No timetable, but improving. But he has just announced uh, Tyler Kinley reinstated. Yeah, Tyler uh, will replace Brad. And Tyler's back. Uh, he feels uh, feels great, uh, confident in in his uh, the health of the elbow in the in the rehab process. Uh, he he checked all the boxes from 
really the time we got to spring training when this really all started, right? You know, throwing programs and exercises and, and doctor timelines from the surgery that he had. Uh, you know, there wasn't uh, any hiccups along the way. So it was a, it was a pretty smooth uh, process for Tyler. Uh, so he'll be back in our bullpen. It's great to have him back. You know, we lose, uh, you know, we lose a solid veteran in Pierce Johnson. We lose a solid veteran in Brad Hand. Get one back with Tyler Kinley. So between uh, Bard and Kinley, as veteran presence out there for uh, for some of our younger pitchers, uh, you know, currently out there, and maybe some younger pitchers to come. It's a it's a great balance. Any but this, limitations on on Tyler in terms of usage? Uh, I mean, we'll you know we'll watch it early on, but uh, you know he'll he'll pitch. Yeah, he'll pitch. But this can obviously be a pretty high tension day for some guys, you know, getting up to the deadline. How do you as a manager kind of try to quell that a little bit and try to help out, maybe cool some of that? Well, you might find this hard to believe. But I talked to the guys about this stuff. Well in advance. Well in advance. And and most and, and really most of the guys who are uh, talked about so have sort of been talked about before. So it's really not uh, anything new for veteran players uh, to go through, you know, the last couple of weeks prior to the trading deadline. So in a sense, they're conditioned for this. You hear me talk about all the time, you know, players are conditioned for so many things because they've been through it before. Nine o'clock starts, rain delays, trade deadline, being traded. Arbitration processes, uh, you know, all all these things that they're, you know, they're used to it. But that's not to think that they can't get, you know, a little uneasy, right? Uh, not knowing what the future holds. So that's, you know, there's there's little conversations in there that I have that uh, that might add some clarity uh, for the guys. And uh, again, knowing uh, what I went through as a player, as a veteran player, and going through that myself a couple different times. Uh, it always felt good to have a coach or a manager come up and uh, you know say a few words about it. You know what, you know perspective and reality. And that's an honesty and some truth uh, about maybe what was happening to the best that we can. Uh, and players appreciate. It. And I do think that uh, eases some of the you know the potential tension or anxiety that a player might have. Hey, buddy, um, so Bard kind of struggle a bit. He's not always the pinpoint guy, but what have you seen from him and what can you do to kind of get him You know, really I, right? I think very, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the varying <coughs> arm, arm slot and release point. I think that's where we got to start. I think we got to, we got to get Daniel comfortable in, uh, in his delivery and, and try to repeat, uh, repeat a delivery and repeat an arm slot, repeat a release point. I think that's where, that's where we got to start. Buddy, Buddy, considering a uh, number of players who go around your history there, are you going to be rooting for the Angels in the American League? You know, I've, I have a, a strong uh, uh, affiliation to the Angels based on my tenure there, uh, way back when as a, as a pitching coach, and most recently, you know, as a special assistant seven years ago. I still know a lot of people there, and uh, uh, you know, I'll be you know, their manager. You know. I, friends with and some, some of their coaches and some of their people in the organization so uh, yeah they'll be a uh, I'll be trying to give them a little extra push for sure. We know a lot of players too. Yeah. yeah yeah well we have three of them three I mean three really good guys. Here. Four. Being a little when you see those guys. Well, Steven. 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 Oh yeah. Steven. 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 So when those guys do well do you, do you be yes, a little bit? for sure. I was, you know, when Gritchie went oppo, uh, that, you know, that, that sort of got the clubhouse going a little bit. Uh, Crony, you know, snuck one in there uh, in the ninth for a base hit to knock in a run to stretch their lead. That was that was cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Austin and Pierce, you know, Pierce pitched yesterday. You know, uh, they win yesterday. The Braves. They lost. Yeah, but he pitched. He pitched the scoreless hitting and kept the game close. So I'm, I'm watching these guys. I'm a baseball fan. Speaking of being a baseball fan. Uh, Max with Scherzer and Verlander. Thoughts? Surprise? Uh, not. I think not really surprised. Right. I, 
again, I think where the where the Mets were, uh, you know, they had some decisions to make and they went that direction. So, uh, it, not really. Hunt and Doyle, um, the four hardest throws by a center fielder in Major League Baseball year. Um, have you been surprised by the arm strength? No. Or? How have impressed have you been with the Orange I've been, I've, you know, we saw, you know, Brent in spring training was with us for the first time. Uh, so every day we saw the practice, you know, going through drills, and we saw the arm. So, and, and, and we were told this by our player development people that, you know, he's a, he's a very good outfielder. He's got a strong arm. Uh, you know, he could play big league defense right now. We knew, we knew that sort of going into this uh, spring training. You know, what's been good to see is the accuracy of the throws and the, and the strength of the throws that we've heard about to, to have that realized. You know, what happens a lot of times, not a lot, but at some, at some times, you get reports uh, about players and maybe, uh, you know, they're not, uh, sometimes we don't see that, but it's good to see that. What have you noticed with Peter? Had success as a you know, couple of starts. Yes. That's his pedigree, his right. background, yes. maturity. It's what you used to do. Right. Do you feel like because of that comfort level, you're seeing greater success as opposed to when he came out of the pen? Well, you know, he had some. You know, when he first came out of the pen, there was some initial success. You know, he, threw, he threw the ball pretty well right out of the chute uh, uh, early in the year. Uh, adjusting to a new role, right? you know, happy to be in the big leagues, right? Yes, that, yes, that up and down player. Hey, where would you rather be in the big league bullpen or triple A rotation, right? That's the answer. But I think you know Peter's uh, heart uh, per se is as a starting pitcher, and he, he sees himself as a starting pitcher. So I think the, uh, the focus uh, has been heightened. He went down to AAA knowing that he was going to get a potential opportunity to come back and start. Uh, so that, I think that got him uh, uh, really concentrating on what he needs to do. And for me, it, it starts with uh, strikes with all pitches. So uh, control first, right? Let's get the ball in the strike zone. Uh, and then from there, if if he's capable, is, you know, let's command the ball, which is for me, command the fastball. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you just need to land a breaking pitch or throw a good change. But you know, the fastball command is you know, something that all starting pitchers have to have to, have to throw a good game, in my opinion. And Peter's done that. You know, he's thrown he's thrown strikes with the fastball in good spots when he's needed to.